Hi guys, Scott here for the MXQproject.com and in today's video we're going to be taking a look at TWRP running on the Amlogic S912 processor. For the purposes of this video I'm going to be using my B-Link GT1 Ultimate, but you can follow along this tutorial with any S912 box that you have lying about. So let's get started. Okay, so welcome back guys. Um, as you can see here, I've clicked on the download link that I've left in the description. This will get you to the download location for the TWRP you're going to need for this tutorial. It's actually the TWRP that has been built for the T95Z box. Um, it's still an Amlogic S912 box and I have tested this and it does work on the likes of the Mikul M8S Pro and of course the B-Link GT1 Ultimate, which is what I'm using for this tutorial. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and click download. This shouldn't take too long. Once that's finished, we just need to click save file and it should save to whatever download location that your browser usually downloads to. Okay, so as you can see, uh, I'm not using Windows. I'm actually using Ubuntu 14.04, but the process for Windows will be exactly the same. There's nothing different. There's no other alternative steps you're going to need to take. You just need to follow along and adapt it to your operating system. And as you can see, I now have the recovery TWRP file for the S912. What we need to do is we need to drag this over to preferably a blank SD card like so. And then we simply need to rename it to recovery and make sure that's spelled correctly. Now, if you're wanting to use this to flash some new firmware, to flash your old firmware back or anything like that, now would be a good time to copy over your firmware as well. I'm not going to do that, but you can do that if you want to. It will make things easier later on if that's what you're wanting to do. And that is pretty much it for the computer steps, guys. So I'll see you in a few moments and we can get over to working with the box itself. Welcome back to the next part of the tutorial guys and it's going to be all about getting TWRP to boot from the SD card that we prepared just a little bit earlier. Now the first step we're going to want to check is that our SD cards are in the right position. So on the B-Link GT1 there's a micro SD card slot just here. Most of these 912 boxes that I've come across do use a micro SD card as opposed to the full size SD card trays but it doesn't matter which yours uses, just make sure that your SD card is securely in place. The next part, completely optional, but it can save a little bit of hassle later when it's going to get tricky, is just to make sure that you've got your HDMI cable securely in place, just so it's ready to boot straight up. The next part will differ depending on your box, but as we're using the B-Link, I'll show you. We need to locate the reset button on your device. Now on the GT1, I'm not sure if the camera's quite picking that up, we have a tiny little pinhole just here, which houses the reset button for the box. Now in a lot of boxes, especially the older models, um, the reset button was actually located in the AV port towards the back of the box. Now you're going to need usually a long thin object to get in there. This is exceedingly small on this box, which is where it gets tricky. Um, so I'm often to use this pin here, but you need to find your reset button and just click and hold it in and we need to continue holding that reset button while we apply power to the box. Keep that button held until the box starts to boot. You should see the manufacturer's logo or boot screen for your particular box. And then what we need to do preferably is to keep this reset button held in until we see the team win splash screen, which is like a blue screen with team win written on the front of it. That's how you know that it's booted. So just to recap again, holding your reset button, apply power to your box. It can be tricky and sometimes it does take a few tries, but we'll get there in the end and I shall see you in the next part. Okay guys, here we are at the main screen for TWRP. Now, no matter what box you're using this on, it will look something very similar to this. Now, we have a myriad of options here. I'm not going to go into all of them in massive detail, but I'm going to try and give you a basic overview of what each one will do. So the first one we come to is install. By the way, I'll point out that I'm having to use uh, a mouse with TWRP because obviously this was designed for touchscreen devices so at the moment keyboard input, gamepad input isn't supported so you will need to use either a USB mouse, a USB optical mouse, something like that or I'm using um, a remote air mouse, just something that can act as a mouse pointer for you. Anyway, the first option is install and if we come in here 
you'll have a load of options like this. And if, for, uh, for example, earlier in the tutorial when I said about copying over any zip files that contained firmware or anything like that, um, you would come into external SD here and they would show up in here. I haven't got any. But um, what you would do is you would click on it and then it would just simply say swipe to install and it will install the firmware for you. You can actually switch on here as well to install image. And as you can see on the external SD card here, the recovery.image we created earlier, the one that is running at the moment, which is running TWRP, what we can actually do here is if we were to click on this, it will come up, it will ask us what partition to flash it to, and because it's a recovery program, we would choose recovery. And if we were to choose swipe to confirm flash, what it would actually do is it would replace the stock Android recovery software on this box, meaning that TWRP would be now the default and it would run straight off the box, no need for any SD cards. So that's something to think about as well. Next option is wipe. Pretty self-explanatory, this is going to wipe your data, your cache and your Dalvik. Um, this is something to do, maybe if your box has been a bit sluggish, you just want to get rid of your cache or something. Or sometimes uh, if uh, uh, firmware installs uh, return with errors, sometimes just wiping these can help. And you've also got an advanced wipe here, so you can wipe whatever you want. You could effectively wipe the entire box if you wanted to. Or you can come in here, you could select a, a file system, maybe one of the file systems not working, and you can repair it. Backup is pretty self-explanatory. What we're doing here is that we can select these options on here and create a backup of our entire operating system on the device or just one partition if you wanted to. If you're wanting to make an Android backup of your entire operating system, the ones to go for would be recovery, logo, boot, system and data. If you wanted to keep any internal data that you've got or any apps and things like that, then you would just click swipe to backup. It would create a backup file wherever you chose. You can click select storage here to choose where to store it. I made one a bit earlier and chose micro SD card. So now if I were to install any custom firmware I could easily uh, easily revert back with this backup that I've made in case anything goes wrong. Restore, again self-explanatory, it will just give a list of any backups that have been created. For example this one is, uh, I've got it set to micro SD card. And this is the backup I made earlier. So if I was to click on this, it shows the partitions that have been back up and then just swipe to restore it. And you can also delete it as well. Mounting, not going to go into too much detail with that at the moment, but you can mount any of the system things. You can mount the USB OTG if you've got it connected to your computer via a USB to USB cable. But I think that's possibly something for another video. We also have settings here. This is pretty ge just uh, generic general settings for TWRP. You shouldn't have to worry too much about in here. We have some advanced settings here. We can copy a log over. So everything we've done in this session um, will be a log will be generated to say everything we've done. And if there's any errors or anything like that, we can review that log by clicking copy log. And it will copy it to the SD card. Fixed contents, I'm not exactly sure what that does, so I'm going to leave it alone. File manager, here we can just view our files, make some changes. External SD, there's our log. And you can do basic things like give it root permissions, move it, rename it, etc. Pretty self explanatory. Terminal pretty self-explanatory again. You could plug a keyboard in at this point and you could just give Android or the box various terminal commands, but we're not going to get into that in this video. We also have ADB sideload. This may be a term you're familiar with if you've ever done anything like this with your mobile phone or your cell phone or something. What you can do here is you can start the sideload. It won't connect anything at the minute, but what it'll do is it'll bring this up and if you've got a USB connected to your uh, computer or laptop or whatever and you've got ADB enabled on that side of things you could actually push firmware and things over to the box from your computer using the USB cable using ADB commands. We also have a reboot menu here where we can 
reboot to the system so this will reboot to whatever operating system is installed on the box we can just power it straight off or we can reboot straight back into the recovery program whatever that is and that is pretty much it for twrp guys there's not much more i can say about it without getting it too advanced but we've covered the basics which is making an install installing custom firmware or a custom recovery to your box we've discussed wiping and you could wipe whatever you like from the box you could even wipe the whole box wouldn't recommend it but there you go you can make backups of your firmware which i recommend doing before you try new firmware you can restore those backups to revert to an earlier state on your box we covered some of the basic settings and some of the more advanced settings as well right guys that is it for this video i really hope you've enjoyed it don't forget to check out our other videos like and subscribe give us a like and a thumbs up if you did like it give us a dislike if you disliked it that's absolutely fine let us know in the comments what you thought like and share the video you know i know a lot of people say this but it really does help sharing is caring get it shared get subscribed to the channel for more content let us know in the comments if you think we could do anything better if there's any tutorials or videos or reviews that you'd like to see in the future if you want to get in touch with us as well you can come over to the facebook group that's going to be in the description also we've now getting the twitter up and running that's at mxq project or also on patreon again links are all going to be in the description check out our other videos guys there's another couple more popping up on the screen right about now i'm also going to be doing videos shortly on my new operating system scott elec which is a libra elec fork so be sure to keep an eye out for that so please continue your support we really really do appreciate it. like and subscribe or dislike that's absolutely fine as well and i shall see you in the next video